and I'm a poet, playwright and cognitive scientist. I was um, really excited by this uh, opportunity to work in a museum and I wanted to, I thought a little bit about what could a writer bring to you know, the physical space of a museum. And um, it struck me that the actual layout of a book is something that allows us to bring together poems and I wanted to write poems about paintings that are displaced in different parts of the museum. And um, so I chose to bring together paintings that are quite different, bring them together and then write about them. And then um, as I create the book, um, you'll see the paintings, well, the poems side by side. And they're, they're in a way, it's a bit like a call and response. I've been calling them diptych poems, but they're poems that in some way have some resonance between each other, as in fact the paintings do. But it's a resonance that I've kind of created myself. It's an added fiction, a narrative that I've added to what the painters saw. And I, I thought that was the best way to interpret our Kearney Street workshop um, umbrella term of transforming fictions. So that's my take on it. That's, that's what I'm doing with poetry. Um, I'm, I'm also writing um, a play. I'm beginning to work on a play here, which is going to be set in the space of the de Young Museum. And um, the idea being that we can walk around the museum with headphones on and hear the voices, the, the ghost voices. And as you walk from space to space in the museum, the story unfolds depending on what space you're in and depending on what painting you're standing in front of and what type of light and sound might be around you. So the museum becomes the stage set. I chose these two paintings um, partly because they're in very different galleries. This is a uh, painting from 1869, um, Eastman's Johnson's painting called Portraits, and here's the yellow lampshade, which is 100 years later, and they're very different schools um, of painters that have been involved, and you can tell very different ways of depicting um, the in domestic interior. And I chose them because in both cases, there's a, it's a family group, but the families are so different, separate in the way they're um, portrayed 100 years between them, and of course, very different events. And so when I wrote about them, I was really in this painting, the fiction that I imposed on this painting, in a sense, was I was really taken by the idea that there's a, a large curtain um, in the portraits of the Brown family, and you don't see what's going on outside, and yet this is a time, 1869, when um, Abraham Lincoln has just been assassinated, when the Civil War has just ended, and there's a huge tumult and change in the outside world, but we don't see the outside world in that painting, whereas in this painting, in 1969, the biggest thing that hits me about this painting is the outside world a sense of the city encroaching into the domestic interior and so I hope that the poems then reflect on that there are little lines in each that they kind of speak to each other so here you see the uh, the four elements of the, and here's the diptych with the, the, the two poems are speaking to each other and there's a few things that resonate and in each case we're talking about the way that light works and here it's something very sparkling, whereas in this poem it was something much more ominous and searing. So that's just one of the ways in which the two poems um, contrast with each other. One of the great things about working uh, in this particular residency is the chance to be with other Curly Street Workshop artists um, and to be with artists and choreographers. And um, I think that people like even you know, James Baldwin, the writer, talked about the fact that he drew his greatest inspiration from the painters around him and I, rather than writers. And I certainly feel that attempt to cross over disciplines that there's an excitement that's created as you try to broach that gap. And I know, for example, um, I've been working with Julie Chang here, and um, as a painter and a fine artist, when, when she looks at paintings, she brings a whole other um, interpretation to things, and it's been a great education for me, walking through the museum with her, and we've been comparing our ideas, myself as a poet and her as a painter, and, um, and some, of the, some of the lines in my poems have grown from ideas that have come up in our conversations together. And um, so my poems have been influenced by her as a, as a visual artist. And I know that Julie's hoping that she might be creating um, some visual art paintings that are drawing on images that I've created in my poems. So there's this nice cycle going on between us. The lecture's on Saturday the 18th of September at 3 p.m. in the Corrit Auditorium and it's called Brain, Perception and Creativity and um, I wanted to try and 
bring together some of the great ideas that uh, are coming forward and share them with members of the public, some of the um, research that has um, that's been conducted recently in the, in the worlds of cognitive science and neuroscience, and basically to explain how it is that um, the brain slaps on filters as we view the world around us and what we can do to disengage those filters, how um, the artistic process and creativity plays a part in that, um, and basically just to, you know, it, it's such a exciting field to me that I'm, I'm delighted to be able to kind of share, share it with members of the public. I'm performing as part of our closing reception for Kearney Street Workshop and of course we'll have this great um, reception here at the Kimball and it's um, on the 24th of September, Friday at 6pm and I'll be one of the performers and I'm going to be presenting some of the um, some of the poem diptychs that I've been working on during the month that I've been here but also presenting some of the work where the general uh, members of the general public have been um, offering words and we've been doing creative exercises together so and we're building various art displays around that so we'll be sharing part of that um, but I'm also performing with some musicians um, including my partner Cole Marian and we're writing um, we've been writing some duets based on so poetry and music duets that are based on um, our inspiration being inspired by some of the paintings in the uh, in the dia above all it is the light glinting from chandeliers spectacles the jet beads tumbling down her skirt the world is here a constellation of sparks circling father mother child a chorus of fireflies against the gathered dark.